Hey everybody, this is Nick, and uh, here is a screen recast of a talk I gave yesterday at the Awesome Summit uh, at a panel called The Age of Peak Guilt that I'm uh, hereby repurposing as part of my South by Southwest uh, proposal, panel proposal. So, we're here at the Awesome Summit, uh, which is an annual gathering of the Awesome Foundation, which is a micro foundation, an open source micro foundation with chapters all over the world. And they've created a new institute called the Institute for Higher Awesome Studies, um, which Christina uh, Zhu, who runs Awesome, described as the uh, kitten Voltron, the uh, exoskeleton superstructure that this distributed brand can click into and be more powerful than the sum of its parts. And what I'm interested in um, is helping create lots, lots, and lots, and lots of Voltron kittens, an army of Voltron kittens all across the internet. So I think that's spectacular. Um, so first, a tiny bit about me. My name's Nick. Grossman. Um, I am a visiting scholar at the Center for Civic Media at MIT. Uh, I'm the activist in residence, uh, air quotes, at Union Square Ventures in New York City, and I'm working on a new project called Connected.io, which is a, an advocacy network around innovation and the open web. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about sort of what, what we're interested in at Connected.io and, and then how that ties into the idea of, of the, the, uh, the age of peak guilt in advocacy. So networks are changing everything. Networks meaning people connected to one another over the internet. Um, and uh, we're here at the Awesome Summit talking about how that's changing finance and philanthropy, enabling people to give money to, to one another in new and creative and interesting ways. And we're seeing networks transform every sector and every industry um, because the internet just makes it possible to connect cheaply and uh, efficiently um, and quickly uh, with everyone and uh, organizations and companies are, are sort of shaping up new ways for us to to connect um, and, and that's pretty powerful it's potentially awesome I say potentially because as we create new institutions on top of the web that are network oriented and uh, and non hierarchical we need to make sure that the values that are baked into those networks uh, are positive uh, and that they're empowering um, and not oppressive um, and I also say potentially because as uh, networks you know, uh, disrupt everything, um, they threaten incumbents. And the future has no lobbyists. Um, the uh, incumbent uh, interests, you know, are, are organized against the disruption that network models of doing everything present. Um, and we're seeing that happen in the U.S. with laws like SOPA and PIPA uh, around copyright. And we're seeing it on the city, uh, the city level where the city council in D.C. has is, is been fighting with Uber, the network-oriented um, taxi company. Um, and Airbnb, which is a network-oriented um, apartment rental site, has run, is starting to run into trouble uh, with regulators. And, uh, and so uh, how do we understand this? How do we advocate for the good things and, and for the future? And uh, when, when there's nobody uh, who, who is the advocate uh, you know, for the new way of doing everything? And I think the answer is that we are the advocates for our connected future. Um, we being people who are making uh, the Internet and who are using it and exploring it and experiencing it and starting to understand the good things that are possible and also starting to understand uh, some of the challenges that we're facing. And um, we need to be fighters and we also need to be cheerleaders, um, but that's not all. Um, you know, the point of this panel is to talk about uh, new, fun ways of being advocates. So I think of that in terms of making, sharing, and connecting. Very powerful, as you can tell, as the screen shakes. Um, uh, we can be advocates by the stuff we make, uh, we can be advocates by what we share with our friends, and we can be advocates by connected together as a network, and broadly we can be awesome and have fun doing it. Um, so here are a few examples that um, you're probably familiar with and maybe a few that you're not. Um, most people may not think about the Firefox web browser as an advocacy project or an activism project, but if you think back to the time when it was created, um, the issue was Microsoft and Internet Explorer and antitrust and web standards and uh, the U.S. government was, was suing Microsoft about all this, and at the same time, uh, the folks at Mozilla um, uh, you know, said, well, maybe we can fight this battle on the product front and build a better product that has the values that we care about baked into that, and we can make that a successful product and sort of move our values through society um, that way, and it worked. That's awesome. Um, another company that's doing, doing the same thing right now is uh, DuckDuckGo, search engine that's uh, all about privacy and the fact that they won't share your data with, uh, they won't track you and, and they won't share your data, they won't sell your data. Um, they're advocating for uh, a certain way of doing things and they're doing it through product too. And 
And on the web, you know, sort of product-based advocacy is you know uniquely possible. And Mark Sermon from who's the head of the Mozilla Foundation said to me the other day, um, you know, most most causes would kill to have the penetration that, that we have because because our products are, are everywhere and in people's hands. And I think that's really true and really interesting. Um, I'm also really interested in the potential to harvest uh, because harvest, it says harvest, uh, harness the creativity of, of makers um, to make things that are that are powerful and convincing. Um, you know, this is a site called Visually, which is a, a, a platform for building um, infographics. And I'd love to see, you know, a lot of the stuff on here has advocacy intentions, and I'd love to see Visually for advocacy. And I think that's creative and fun and convincing. Um, this is a little mock-up of a site that I'm calling Threat Vector, which is like hacker news for tech policy. I, I would love somebody to make this. Um, but I look at sites like Reddit and Hacker News where people are pouring over the daily news and having, you know, civic discourse about it and, and firing up, you know, communities to do stuff. Um, and uh, and that's, that serves an, it serves an advocacy purpose already and I think could even more um, uh, in a way that's social and fun and, uh, and an everyday thing. And then we're seeing new projects uh, explore new ways of, of getting people engaged. Um, one that I think is cool is called Thunderclap, which is a way of doing mass tweets, um, like Kickstarter for, for advocacy tweets. Um, another that's pretty cool is Upworthy, um, which is all about sharing, uh, sharing better. So it, you know, for all of us that are, that are sitting there um, looking at, at lolcats and, and funny videos on YouTube and sharing them with our friends, what if we were sharing things with, with slightly more civic value um, in them? Um, and, and that's getting some traction. I think it's pretty neat. Um, one of my favorite projects right now is the Internet Defense League, which is a distributed network of websites and individuals uh, who are standing up to protect the Internet. Like the Awesome Foundation, this is, this is a, sort of an open project. This uh, graphic right here was created by the creative team at Daryl Ice's office, the congressman from California. Um, and uh, I just love the fact that the, the, the whole you know, sense of the Internet Defense League is so empowering and awesome and, and uh, makes you want to be part of it to the extent that folks who aren't even you know, directly involved are, are, are building graphics and, and sp spreading them on the net. I think that's awesome. Um, Free Press, which is another organization that's been active in uh, internet politics, uh, is, is organizing the Summer of Internet Freedom. So you can have a barbecue for internet freedom. And uh, that's about network building and connections and, and community. And I think it's cool. Um, a project that we're working on that, um, uh, that I think would be awesome is called Slash Awesome. And the idea is that uh, part of the reason why we get bad internet legislation uh, is that not everyone realizes all of the awesome stuff that's possible because the web exists and the open web exists. And so we need to be able to tell that story uh, more loudly and more clearly and with more, with more detail and more data. Um, and so uh, slash awesome is, is the idea of what if every website on the internet added a page at slash awesome that told the unique story about what that, um, that platform, that community was making possible. Um, and what if everybody did that? And what if we had uh, Nyan Cat <laughs> flying across the sky uh, trailing awesome with it so that everyone knew how awesome awesome was? And so, you know, I think there, there are just uh, all kinds of ways that, that we're seeing guiltless advocacy um, being experimented with, and I think that's pretty exciting. And I uh, hope you'll uh, join in with us as we continue on our quest to increase awesome in the world. Thank you very much.